Hello, my name is Tom Morrison of Avdale UK. Today we're going to show you the correct installation method for placing 3/8 the monobolts using the 7287 rivet tool. Before operating the tool, you first have to check the tool is operating properly. This will involve connecting it to the air, turning the tool on and operating the trigger a few times to check the correct function of the tool. Check for any oil or air leaks and especially check the nose tip of the tool to make sure it's not chipped or broke. Now we show the correct insulation method for the three on a bolt. Off the far side to the nose equipment, push the far side into the front of the tool, making sure it's fully pushed home. Offer the fastener to the application, pushing it fully home, making sure the head of the rivet is tightly pushed against the application. Pull the trigger, wait for the stem to break, then release the trigger. Let's see that installation process one more time. Here are a few points to avoid. Never use the tool and rivet to force alignment of the holes. Never use unnecessary pressure to force the rivet into the hole by striking the back of the tool, as this can damage the rivet and cause incorrect placing which will lead to quality issues at a later date. Never place the rivet at an angle, always make sure the head of the rivet is flat against the application and the tool is kept at right angle to the application before pulling the trigger. Once you've finished using the tool, ensure you lay the tool down carefully on its side on a clean dry surface by the top of the intensifier box, making sure no damage occurs to the nose tip. Hello, my name is Tom Morris at the Valve Day in the UK. Today we're going to show you how to strip down, clean and replace the nose equipment on a 7287 tool. Servicing of the nose equipment is recommended on a weekly basis, more often if the tool is used in more severe conditions. To clean the nose equipment, the following equipment is needed. A can of WD-40 or any light oil, a tin of modern lithium grease, the appropriate spanner and a small wire brush. To remove the nose equipment, pull forward and half turn the locking ring. Half turn and pull forward the outer casing. The appropriate spanner, undo jaw housing, place on the bench. Disassemble the jaw housing, removing the jaw housing, the jaws, the jaw spreader, the spring and the spring guide. Clean all items with either WD-40 or a light oil, paying particular attention to the jaw form on the inside of the jaw, cleaning with a wire brush as necessary and also inside the jaw housing cleaning out any material which is built up within the housing. Once all items are clean, put your attention to the nose tip of the tool. This is very important. You'll see a raised lip on the nose tip. This is important as it this creates the mechanical lock on the fastener. Inspect this for any damage. If it's broken or damaged in any way, discard and replace. Now for reassembly. Take the spring guide, place the spring over the spring guide, place the jaw spreader on top of the spring, lightly grease with monolithium grease just to the top of the jaw spreader. Place the jaws on top of the jaw spreader. Place the jaw housing over the assembly slide to the edge of the bench, place your finger on the bottom and raise. Screw the complete assembly onto the front of the tool. Tightening with the appropriate spanner. Place the outer casing over the jaw spreader, ensuring the two lugs are located within the locking ring. Half turn. Half turn the locking ring, it will spring back when it locates in its recess. You're now ready to test the tool. Take a 3 8 monobolt and push it into the nose equipment, ensuring that the rivet goes down fully against the nose tip. With an appropriate bit of scrap material with the correct hole size, 
place the fastener into the hole, pull the trigger. You're now confident the tool is working correctly and it's ready to go back onto production. Before operating the tool, ensure you have read and understood the safety instructions of the front of the tool manual, in which you will also find full instructions on service and maintenance, and in the back of the book you'll find a full diagnostic checklist. Thanks, I'm Tom Morrison. Look out for more training videos which will come shortly from the team at Havdil.